good afternoon to all. Uh, my talk is about uh, apical balloon syndrome that is characterized by transit left ventricular mid and apical wall motion abnormality in absence of significant coronary artery disease. Generally, the clinical and electrocardiographic presentation is and biomarker. Biomarkers are very similar to myocardial infarction. The di diagnostic criteria from Mayo Clinic are well known for all. So the hypokinesia or kinesia or dyskinesia in left ventricular mid segments or apical segments are the main, uh, the main diagnostic, but it is necessary to prove that, is, that there is no coronary artery disease or rather disease like pheochromocytoma or myocarditis that you have seen all so difficult is sometimes to the diagnosis in an acute phase. Uh, you first, uh, our interest in the apical balloonic syndrome in 97, with the presentation of this paper with seven patients. In the acute cardiac care, 2008, 12 patients. And now uh, our registry has 30 patients, we have really 33 patients, but three are waiting results for follow-up. And uh, to evaluate the data of the ABS patients admit to our cardiology department in Faro. 30 patients had been identified between this period of time and they represent the rates under 1% of the patients with the uh, acute, acute uh, myocardial infarction. We relate to the, the, these parameters. And the, the, you can see that uh, 29 were female, as usual, and uh, 24 postmenopausal females, and the age around 66. And the, the cardiovascular risk factors are similar of the other population in this age. The clinical presentation suspect chest pain or dyspnea are very similar to the, those with the ACS, and uh, only one third has clear identifiable trigger. The SCG data with the ST elevation or ST depression, mainly ST elevation, of course, in precordialism in almost all, but also negative waves, mainly in the uh, resolution phase and the uh, QTC, long QTC in most pa of patients. And uh, the biomarkers and troponine are uh, elevated, the troponine in all the patients. This is one, one example of the electrocardiogram evolution. You could see that the inferior leads has no depression, ST segment depression. Another one very similar to myocardial infarction. And the, the echocardiographic data with the, the referred echinesia or hypokinesia in all of patients, also in ventriculography, and the, the ejection fraction, low ejection fraction, by the two means of diagnosis are very similar. And normal angiographic arteries in 24 patients, six patients with minor lesions, and no one with the vasospasm. As you could see, the typical aspect of the echocardiogram. And uh, so you have to go on. You believe me that coronary arteries are normal. And the shape of the left ventricle is very typical also. So you are going over this other case because you have less of time. And in the acute phase, the complications, you have uh, six patients with cardiogenic shock, so heart failure in the acute phase may be 
may be very important, and a very important event, and uh, uh, you have also one death. This is the only death that you have in this area. The in-hospital treatment reflects our doubts and the, the intention to treat the uh, acute coronary syndrome initially, and we stop, uh, of course, clopidogrel after you know it is no, there is no coronary artery disease. And uh, the follow-up period during 25 months uh, could uh, show that uh, there is a recurrent chest pain in five patients, no deaths, and uh, this is the medical tr treatment that patients have made during this period and completely recover of uh, LV segmental abnormalities in seven, more or less, five weeks. That means in two weeks to three months, all were normal. The recurrence rate was about 7%, two cases that you have here, and the pre clinical presentation, echo and the electrocardiogram, and uh, the results of the coronary was were exactly the same and recover also. This is after the recover. So uh, in uh, epital balloon syndrome, we have uh, a lot of designations that a uh, lot of names reflect their knowledge about the pathophysiology of this entity. Uh, real, there is no uh, good one I like epical balloon syndrome, uh, and I, I don't like very much the others. Tacto tube, because I explained it at the end. Pathophysiology, uh, main mechanisms invoked are coronary vasospasm, in, in our case, neither, and the transit coronary flow, flow dysfunction, microvascular perfusion defects, myocarditis, transit intraventricular gradient, and you have shown sun and the uh, capital means levels elevation. So in pathophysiology it is very important and uh, this state from Baltimore uh, with the myocardial biopsy, uh, it is very inespecific to the endomyocardial biopsy, but it is shown that uh, all capital means were uh, elevated and uh, this elevation is uh, compared with patients with uh, acute coronary syndrome is very high. Exaggerated sympathetic stimulation is probably central to the cause of this syndrome. It is the conclusion of the authors after the results of this study. So, uh, if you look at the causes, or possible causes of this syndrome, you have to consider the use of inotropic drugs in this uh, context. It is very, very controversy and maybe dangerous. Nowadays, uh, a new look to the electrocardiogram, a very simple and cheap exam, uh, can uh, have been mentioned in this study in 2009 and comparison of the electrocardiograms of the uh, patients with uh, uh, ABS, with patients with acute MI, you can, can see that there is more elevation on inferior leads in uh, TC patients no ST depression in TC patients, and the uh, ST segment elevation uh, superior to one millimeter in lead two has uh, also some sensitivity uh, over 60%. And this other criteria from other group that shows that uh, abnormal Q waves are more frequent in MI, of course, no reciprocal sessions in inferior leads, uh, in TC patients, and the ratio, or the sigma, between the, uh, the elevation V4, V5, V6 to V1, V3 is higher in TC patients. Uh, the combination of two, the criteria two and three, uh, gave us the greater specificity and the, the accuracy in this, uh, in ABS patients. The role of scintigraphy, uh, the, the, science, the science in scintigraphy 
like to conclude this authors that this finding strongly suggests that TAXO2, myocardial myopathy, could be caused by neurogenic myocardial stunning. And the, uh, this other paper with scintigraphy shows that uh, there are uh, difference in perfusion scores between TAXO2 and the uh, acute coronary syndromes in the acute phase, subacute phase, and chronic phase of these patients. So they conclude that the impaired coronary microcirculation may be, a, may be a causative mechanism of taxo tubo cardiomyopathy. Finally, the role of magnetic resonance is, seems more important uh, in differential diagnosis. And this study published in the European Art Journal 2008 shows that uh, in uh, is 59 patients with normal coronary arteries, MRI could identify thir 13 with MI, 8 with myocarditis, and uh, or suspected myocarditis. You can say after the, after the session, pre previous session, and uh, 38 with the suspected uh, ABS. And in this patients, no signs of inflammation, and no delayed enhancement. MRI at three months showed that uh, left ventricular ejection fraction was normal, like the volumes in the diastolic and in systolic volumes. So cardiac MRI allows differentiating, differentiating ABS from other REC causes with an unobstructed coronary vessels and can add valuable information in all patients with suspected ABS for further differential diagnosis. In this paper, it is confirmed with no late hyper of the apical portion. And uh, in this study from uh, Guillaume Lohan, they could uh, see Medline and the base database. They find eight studies with more than five patients, ABS patients, and uh, the MR, MRI ejection fraction uh, in acute phase was very depressive, and uh, they could see myocardial edema. In some cases, right ventricular dysfunctions, that is new also, and uh, apical thrombus. And uh, although cardiac MRI is very useful in management of apical balloon syndrome, there is no large published studies and a systematic and multicentric register of ABS studied by MRI is necessary. You can see the ballooning, the apical ballooning. And my conclusions are that uh, Apical ballooning syndrome is a rare entity, but the real incidence could be underestimated. ABS should be considered on differential diagnosis of MI. ABS diagnosis needs demonstration of a sense of significant coronary artery disease by coronary angiography. Although the transit character of LV dysfunction in ABS, severe complications may occur in the acute phase. ABS has very good medium-long-term prognosis. In our history, no mortality um, and low recurrence rate was observed during uh, 19, nine months of follow-up. More investigational studies and registries are needed to understand the etiology, the pathophysiology, and the incidence of apical ballooning syndrome. Uncertainty remains about treatment, namely about the role of beta blockers anti-aggregants, anticoagulants, and the inotropic drugs in shock patients. So this is because I don't like Takotsubu cardiomyopathy because the real name is Alcatruz. Portuguese take this, <laughs> this strap, octopus strap, to Japan in the 16th uh, century. Thank you.